Hi, Stuart. It's Leisha. Would it be okay to ask a question about Rudy? You can do what about Rudy? To ask a question about Rudy. Yeah, why not? I okay, think it'd well, be great. <laughs> just checking. <laughs> My favorite subject. <laughs> I wondered if in your experience, you ever saw Rudy become angry with anyone or assert strong boundaries with anyone, or was he always accepting and loving? And Oh, no, Rudy was, you know, you screwed around with him and the wrath of Rudy would come down very quickly, putting you exactly in your place and telling you to stop the bullshit. I mean, he, you know, I mean, I, I I can just talk from my own experience where he, you know, just said things to me that were very strong, very angry, because I did some stupid stuff that I shouldn't have done. But at the same time, one second after he said it, it's all forgotten. He does, never hung on to anything, you know, and he said it even with the anger and the upsetness, it came from his heart. It came from a place where he really cared about me as his student, as a person who was very dear to him, who he knew he could train. And sometimes Stuart needed a good kick in the butt just to remind him. I mean, I've done that with many. I give him a good kick in the butt. And five minutes later, it's gone. I don't think about it. It's gone. I'm not angry at them. I'm not upset at them. But something in that moment changed. It enabled them to really learn something and to go to a better place in their life. And Rudy used to do this. I, he did it with me. My God, you know. He once, I used to send, when I lived in Texas, I used to send them all these letters about how grateful I was. And we were in India, and he was going through a really hard time, Rudy. A lot of changes were taking place. A lot of things were going on. He had a tremendous responsibility of what he was doing there. And he got upset, and he took out his anger on me. And he told me, I'm tired of your lip service gratitude. I want to see you do something. <laughs> you know? He said, don't keep sending me all his letters telling me how grateful you are. I want you to see you in your activity, your actions, to express that gratitude. Boy, did I learn something then. I really learned something. Very powerful. And it taught me how to recognize that every activity I did in the world was a way of serving a higher force of energy in the universe. So it's not anger, really. It's stop the bullshit. Get your life together, get grounded, understand what you're doing here. And the incredible thing about Rudy, and I learned that, I'm not saying that I'm incredible, but I learned that from him. You don't hold on to anything. There's this thing of forgiveness, of not hanging on to things. You're angry in a second and you let it go. And you let it go. You don't. I mean, he wrote a little story once, Rudy, that's really great, you know, where he said, talked about these two monks that came to a river and they both took vows of celibacy and they were sannyasins and they were vegetarians and they were, you know, the whole nine yards of, you know, Hindu religious, uh, you know. And there was a woman there. They could not touch a woman that was part of their vows. So there was a woman there who had to get across the river and she couldn't get across the river. So one of the monks picked up the woman, carried her across the river, put her down on the other side of the river. And he and the other monks started walking. The other monk never stopped complaining about the vow of never touching a woman, blah, blah, blah. He was going on and on and on and on, you know? Finally, about a mile later, this monk who brought the woman across the river said, look, I picked her up, I brought her across the river, I left her on the other side of the river. You're still carrying her in your heart. <laughs> <laughs>
You know, it's a wonderful story because we carry these things with us, the anger that Rudy never carried anything like that in his heart. I mean, I've had people do stuff to me that was almost like, you know, you would say kind of unforgivable. And if they ever came to me and said, I'm sorry, I mean, it's all gone. It's part of the past. Let's start anew. And from the experience of the past, I learned to move on. I couldn't hold it. In, like that monk, I left it at the river. Not holding on to it. So yeah, Rudy, you know, yeah, he he was, he, he get pissed off, Rudy. At the same time, he didn't hold it. He never held it against you. You know, his whole purpose was to love you so deeply that he could be angry at you and you knew he loved you. It was, I learned that from him. Otherwise, how can I do what I do? You know, everybody is different. Everybody has their own stuff they got to deal with. You know, and uh, leave it at the other side of the river and move on, you know? Not hold it, not let it tear you apart, rip you apart. You know, I had a girlfriend once, I'll never forget her, this, you know, she... When she was younger, she was rather quite a famous person, a model and an actress and all that stuff, you know. And But she was also an alcoholic when she was younger. And, uh, and I'm walking in the street with her and she is complaining to me about her mother, who was also an alcoholic. And, you know, she hadn't probably seen in 50 years, 40 years, you know. And, and I looked at her, I said, my God, let it go. This happened 40 years ago. Let it go. She was still angry. And I said to myself, Stuart, this relationship can't go anywhere. And I broke the relationship up. But 40 years later, she's still angry at her mother because her mother was an alcoholic. And she got this thing from her mother. The whole point is not the anger, it's letting it go learning from whatever the situation was and moving on. I mean, I wrote a book. I don't know if you read the book I wrote called Moving On, Finding Happiness in a Changed World. <laughs> I mean, it's basically the essence of what I'm talking about. It's a book of what, a hundred and something aphorisms, you know, that I published a long time ago. I don't know if you, know, if you ever read that, but it's really a I mean, Chris has it by her bedside, reads it almost every day, you know? These aphorisms that I wrote a long time ago. Moving on, finding happiness in a changed world. And that book was published right after 9-11. And I, I gave it the title, Moving On, Finding Happy. And the world was completely changed after 9-11, just as it was changed after COVID. We got to move on. We can't allow these things to interfere with the next moment of our lives. So yeah, Rudy got angry and you're very welcome to talk, ask questions about Rudy, my favorite subject. Thank you. You're welcome. Here. Does anyone else have a question? Yes, I do, Stuart, Chris. Uh, my question is about uh, something that you wrote in Moving On, and it's where you said, um, all people suffer, even the search for enlightenment creates suffering. And I hope that you will talk to us about that. Well, suffering is indigenous to every human being. I don't care if you're a saint or you're a criminal, or you're a murderer, there's suffering. I mean, look, the, the struggle to get enlightenment is the single most difficult thing that anybody can do on the earth. There's going to be a struggle. There's going to be pain. You're going to be tested. You're going to go through all kinds of bullshit situations that are going to test you. And if you give up because of them, 
I mean, look at what Christ, I mean, forgive them. They know not what they, the guy's nailed to a cross for God's sake. And that's what comes out of his mouth. Forgive them. They know not what, I mean, that is one of the most extraordinary things ever said in the history of the world. And I'm not even a Christian. I'm not, I'm not a religious person, you know? But it's extraordinary. The pain, the suffering, forgive them. They know not what they do. I mean, this little thing of forgiveness is in every aspect of every sacred book that has ever been written. And it's the way to get through suffering. And it's the way to move on in your life without holding, you know, without <laughs> leaving that woman at the other bank of the river. You yeah. Know? <laughs> Thank you. So whatever we do, I mean, look, Rudy once told me, he said, you either suffer like a schmuck or you suffer for your enlightenment. <laughs> what he said. <laughs> he said, you suffer like a schmuck or you suffer in trying to get your enlightenment, you know, in, in a conscious way. You use the suffering to get your enlightenment. Or you suffer like a schmuck. Most people just suffer like schmucks, you know? Pardon my language today. I don't know what's coming out. You know. <laughs> That's great. You know? Yeah, I mean, you know, I I once had a, a painting when I had a gallery on 13th Street in Manhattan. I had a painting. And I had a, a client who was a pretty well-known movie star, you know? And I won't mention names. Anyway, I had this painting. It was a wonderful Japanese Zen painting by a very famous monk from the late 19th century. And it was just a staff. It was a staff. And there was calligraphy. Those that are on the path get hit with this staff. And those that are not on the path get hit with this staff. And then you forget that. You talk about a learning lesson, you know? Yeah. Whatever you do, you're going to get hit with the staff. You might as well do it consciously and learn how to use it to have a spiritual life. That's good. <laughs> Does anyone I'll never forget that sale I made to that guy? I won't say who it was, but it took about a half hour of him making me crazy. I should do this. Like, what do I need this? I shouldn't. Buy it. And I looked at him and I said, would you buy this fucking painting and stop making me crazy? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Nobody <laughs> got a check. Get the money. <laughs> Never forget that. It was so funny. <laughs> Is anyone else? Boy, I'm using a lot of curse words today. No good, Stuart. But all right, forgive me. I know not what I do. <laughs> Does anyone else have a have a question they would like to ask? Does, does anyone else have a question? Stuart? Yes, Larry. Yeah, I think what you said today, I think it's important to talk about the use of humor and not taking yourself so seriously on this path and to laugh along the way. I agree, Larry, 100%. Humor is about 70% of the struggle, overcoming this, just to be able to laugh at yourself. You know, it's you know ninety percent of the struggle just to be able to, you know, stop it. Why are you making so much drama? You know, in three days you're not going to remember why you made the drama. <coughs> you're going to feel the results of the drama. You know, and I agree with that. Humor is a really big part of it, and being able to laugh at yourself and laugh at what goes on in this world, the absurdity of the world. I mean, you know, that play by Samuel Beckett, it's all about the absurdity of the world. 
a world that is horrible be, by the frustrating nature and the and it's the whole play is just full of humor. You know, the whole play is full of you. And yet the whole underlying story is everybody's waiting for Godot, you know? <laughs> the whole thought is an absurd thing, you know? And yet it, the play was just... And yet you spent, you know, an hour and a half laughing at these two characters up there, Dodo and Didi, you know, waiting for Godot. Does anyone else have a question? Great questions today. Another. Okay, if there are no more questions, God bless you all and thank you. And there'll be a class on Sunday. I'm looking forward to seeing you all. And uh, again, I keep telling you every class, you all are very important in my life. You all are my teacher. You all are what I have to work against and steward in order to make this thing possible. So God bless you all and thank you. And I'm looking forward to seeing everybody on Sunday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you. You're welcome.